Hi everybody, this is Professor West for GMC. We are working with Alice and today we're going to be talking about joint arrays. And I know this is going to sound a little complicated, but that's okay. We'll get through it. We're going to do something a little different when we start off our project today. Until now, we've just picked a background. But if you look up here at the top, you see where it says starters and my projects, recent, and file system. If you want to open something you've done recently, you can go here, or if you want to open a project that you got saved somewhere. But starters is created just for you. These are worlds that have already been created for you, or scenes that have already been created for you, that you can just add more to depending on what you want. And there's quite a few of them in here. Notice a lot of them have a name and then say full and then say minimal. So there's three that are the same. Well, as you can tell by looking here, the minimum has a lot less stuff on it. The full um, seems to be the middle one for some reason. And then there's the one with neither full nor minimal. So we're going to come up here to one of the top ones. We're going to pick Africa. And let's go ahead and pick the minimal. Because that'll just, if you don't, there's going to be a lot of trees and bushes and stuff in the way. And I want you to be able to see what we're doing. So click on the Africa minimum one, and then click OK. Now this is going to start a whole new project, and they've already got this set up. Now if you wanted to do it the hard way, you could have gone in and told it to put this kind of ground, and then gone in and found one of these giant mounds, and one of these trees, and one of these trees, and a watering hole, and a ground for the back and done all you could have added all that individually this has just already been done for you so you don't have to okay let's go into the setup scene and let's go browse by let's go to browse all the classes and let's go to the quadruped classes that means they have four legs like a dog or a cat or in this case we're going to use an elephant so scroll over until you get to the elephant there's one right here. On mine, it's right beside the purplish little dragon thing. And let me get, once we get this up, I'm gonna explain something else to you. So let's go ahead and get it on the screen. And I'm just gonna put it kind of over here by the watering hole a little bit. You're gonna see several different options. There's the African, the African with Hauda. I don't know what that means. I haven't tried that one yet. Asian. Let's just stick with the standard African elephant for now. You can always go in and change this stuff later. And then we'll just click OK. Now that puts it on there, but that's a little small. So I'm going to come over here to resize and click it. And I'm going to point to this little thing right up here in the corner. And I'm going to make my elephant bigger. Next I'm going to click on rotation and I'm going to okay so now that I've got it rotated a little bit we're gonna work on joint movement now this is something that's relatively new and they've added in a bunch of creatures that have tails. Um, some of the birds that have long necks and the elephant with his trunk. And what happens is they basically, instead of it being one picture and they're gonna try to move it, they broke it down into several smaller pictures called an array of pictures, which is basically a list that you can access. And we're gonna use that to give it more realistic movement. So let's get out of the code. And let's start doing it. First, make sure you're on the elephant. So this elephant should be selected. There's a lot of extra stuff here, but we're not going to worry about it. It should already be if it's not, click on it. And next we're going to click on functions. 
Now, there's only two arrays associated with this elephant that have already been created. There's the get trunk array, and then there's one down here somewhere. Uh, oh, the tail array. There it is. So we're not going to worry too much about the tail in this one today. Let's go back to procedures, and let's start building something. So right off the bat, let's get the one that says turn. There it is. And we're just going to drag it right over and put it up here. It's going to give us a few options. And let's pick backward and 1.25. Or 0.125, sorry. Backward and 0.125. Now if I run it right now, it's going to tilt. That's not what I want. We're going to have to fix that. Okay. Let's go to functions now. And let's tell it to get the trunk. Because right now it's just on the elephant. We're going to tell it to get trunk. And we're going to move it up here and see it's the only one that lights up. It's got a black square around it. We're going to put that right in. Now when we run it, it moved our trunk. You can hit restart to see it again if you'd like. That's all we told it to do was move up there. Okay. So we can... Well, we should be able to move that down. It should do it, but okay. Then let's make a copy and then drag it off the clipboard. We're going to do the exact same thing to this one, and we're going to change it from backwards to forwards. So the trunk moves backwards one point or point one two five, and then forward the same. So now when we run it, it goes out and back. See that? It's a little stiff looking, though, isn't it? That's okay. We can fix that. So now at the very bottom, there's two things that are associated with arrays. There's each end together, and there's four each end. We're going to get the each end together, and we're just going to drag it up here and put it right beneath that one. When we do, notice that this other box comes up. We're going to come up here, and we're going to click on the unset right above the, the box that you could type in. We're going to click the drop down. And we're going to go down to other types. And we're going to choose S joint. S joint is the type of array that we're that we're already going to be using because it's the elephant's trunk. So that's why we're choosing S joint there. Now let's give it a name. Let's call it something like joint. You could call it nose or trunk or whatever. It doesn't really matter. And then for array we're going to click on it and we're going to choose custom array now we could go in and build an array but this is actually going to just be a placeholder until we get the trunk on here so we're just going to click OK and not mess with actually building an array at this time we're going to leave it blank as a placeholder OK make sure you click OK and now it should all be set up here. So now we're going to go back to the functions. So we're getting the functions here. And we're going to do the get elephant trunk array. And notice how only one box highlights for it. That's nice. That helps us by letting us know exactly where we can put it. Okay. Come over here and point to the elephant now. And go all the way down. And we're going to point to joint. Now that we have joints in the, in the trunk, we can add functionality to those trunks. So let's go to procedures. And we're going to get a turn procedure. And we're going to put it in here. 
and it's going to ask us what we want to do. We're going to go backward 0 0.125 again. And then we're going to get a for each in. And we're just going to drag it there. Now this is just another array, just like the one that we set up a while ago. So we're going to try to walk through going backwards, because right now we have the, the trunk set to move up. So we need to reset it to move back down. So in, let's see, before we came down to types, we told it S joint. We named it joint. I'm going to call this one joint two just so that it'll be a little different. And then for the array, we chose custom array and okay. Then we go back to the functions and we get the, get trunk array again. Okay, so we're gonna need to go back. Um, let's see. We're going to need to go back to our elephant. We're going to need to get our trunk array, just like we did before. And we're going to plug it into the second box. And then, let's see, we're going to get a turn from procedures. Just like we did before. Only instead of moving it backwards, this time we're going to move it forward, 0 0.125. And that should be it. Let's test it and see. It's going to move it the old way first, out and back, and then it should move it the new way. So you can see the difference. See how stiff that looks? And then how that looks a little more fluid. Oops. <laughs> I accidentally changed the wrong thing. That happens in programming. I left it on the elephant instead of changing it to the trunk. Oh, that happens. Okay. Anyway, so we can figure that out. But the point is, that should have been on the joint, not on the... Yes, joint two, thank you. Now when we run it, it goes up stiff and back, and then it goes up proper and back down. And see how that's much more lifelike. That's the whole point of doing it this way. And then all of the tails and a lot of the long necks on these creatures are going to work in a very similar manner that you can do this with. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it and come back for the next video. Bye everybody.